welcome back to another episode of the set at home mom and today i want to talk about a podcast i listened to on npr from 1a it's called how should we regulate homeschooling and i also want to apologize for the sound quality i did not realize that my microphone's battery has been dead and that's why the sound doesn't sound so great and i could not tell that because when i listen to my own voice it doesn't sound quiet to me so we will be working on getting a better microphone so you can have a good quality sound um except of I'm just, I video on my iPad because that's what I got. Anyway, so let's talk about this uh, podcast that I will post a link to and you should definitely check out. It's only 35 minutes. You can listen to that while you are cooking dinner or something. Anyway, so it starts off with um, the person that uh, proposed the question. They were looking for suggestions from viewers. She was homeschooled herself and kind of talks about how she basically experienced some uh, not so great uh, homeschooling experience. This happened to her kind of in the in the 90s and she's an adult with children of her of her own that she did homeschool for a while that she felt she had to because of social pressures from people around her and then eventually put her kids in public school when she realized they were not as bad as she was led to believe she talks that the curriculum that her family used was kind of part of some kind of cult that was against teaching science which sometimes when people say that that just means they don't teach evolution as a as a fact and saying that it uh, discouraged girls from learning advanced math because she was going just to be a, a homemaker and didn't need to know that stuff. And unfortunately, yeah, I, I can see that, that that happening and that's kind of sad and unfortunate. So she does mention that th that it was a different time than compared to, um, to now. She felt as if she was kind of indoctrinated um, and that... You know she she missed out on on certain things um and so the host and her talk a little bit and kind of say well what should there be some kind of oversight and they included things like well there should be some kind of record or proof being kept of what's being done that there should be uh, mentioned something about background checks and uh physicals for kids and the host made a comment about twice in the podcast about vaccines alluding to that well kids are going to be vaccinated if they're in the public school because you know laws mandating it right and there's also this uh, idea you can see one of my previous videos that people were choosing to homeschool so in order to avoid vaccinating their kids now that's a whole nother topic that we can talk about but they were putting that under the band of under under the umbrella of of health as going to public schools means kids are going to be healthier or something um, they get another woman on that's from the Coalition of Responsible Homeschooling. And if you really look into that organization, it is not, it's not totally against homeschooling, but it is definitely not a, responsible homeschooling is just a code for we need, we had some really bad negative experiences and we think if there's a law, it'll prevent um, bad things happening to other children. And I think that's a problem in our society that when something bad happens, we just think, let's get a law, it'll fix it. And the unfortunate thing is, is bad people will still get around laws. Um, and just this whole victim mentality that something goes, yeah, something goes bad. We need, we just need a law to fix it. And I don't want to downplay the experiences of bad um, homeschooling that might have happened. Um, but the thing is, is like how much bad public schooling goes on and um you know like there can just be bad parenting uh there was a teacher that was in my district and he actually got teacher of the year and in part of his little uh, speech he kind of mentioned that even though he went to public school and he struggled and all this stuff he was abused at home or, ne or neglected and said he kept hoping someone would notice but no one ever did or said anything to him so there's just an example of despite him going to public school like his neglect at home was never, never addressed, brought up kind of thing. So it still, it still happens. And I know kids that had, uh, had probably been neglected and abused even when I was working in the schools myself. So, um, both the, both these women had bad experiences. And then the guy, they had a man on in favor of homeschooling and he has part of a research institute and, um, Basically, he looks at uh, he looks at the data, or he gathers data and stuff like that. And they kind of—it's funny how they try to discredit him by saying, um, which he, he addresses, you know, that 
well, you're just one person doing doing all the stuff. You're just one one employee. Well, he, well, it's a nonprofit. Like you're not gonna have very many employees in a nonprofit anyway. And the thing is, is you still are capable of looking at the data and you make a judgment on yourself. The person from the coalition kind of responded to his flaws and his um, his studies, saying oh, that it's um, it's biased because there's it's based on a survey with poor results and that most people responding are mostly white well-educated uh you know parents with good income basically and they said well we know that those kids are going to turn out fine because the parents are are educated okay sure there probably is a little bit more of a benefit to having educated parents homeschooling you versus uneducated maybe i mean that depends on how you want to define educated versus uneducated um so also in the podcast, you know, they have people, they, they read comments from people saying that there should be a complete ban on homeschooling. They have people coming in saying like what their kind of experience was. Um, like one lady said she um, was homeschooled for a while despite her mom being Polish and English as her second language and said when she went back into the public school, she was a head of her, of her peers. So it was a positive experience for her. And they kind of, you know, like, they kind of just, she, the coalition lady had kind of made the comment about, you know, kind of give examples of all these, like, horror stories of just flat-out abuse and neglect that happened to children and kids, like, dying and people not knowing about because they were homeschooling and things like that. Um, so she's kind of, like, they're implying that, well, if there's some kind of oversight checking in on these kids, it will prevent um, abuse. Would it really? We don't know. And I'm going to be more inclined to say it doesn't. And the thing that I think bothered me was sometimes that hypocrisy of, you know, why would we suddenly want to start checking on kids when they turned uh, to the age of compulsory education? Like, why aren't we checking on them from day one? Because sure enough, abuse and neglect can happen from the time you, you bring that you bring that baby home until they start school. So, I mean, logically, like, if we're worried about kids being abused in the home and, you know, you could say being a stay at home mom is a cover for abusing children, but we don't think that way because it's still culturally acceptable and normal for, for moms to sometimes stay home with their children and always put them in the daycare. But the mom wants to continue staying home with their children once they turn to the age of going to school and suddenly we're concerned about the safety of, of the child and that just really does not make any like it just it doesn't play out logically anyway, and I'm probably just preaching to the choir choir on that. <clears throat> um, they briefly mentioned talking about socialization, and one of the 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 initial woman that had submitted the response had made the comment that she was told by the people that wrote this curriculum that was described as cult like is that children don't learn anything good from their peers, so that's why they don't need to be in public school. And there is kind of a lot of truth to that um you pick up a lot of bad habits from from your peers and sometimes that's why as parents we decide who our kid can come over for a play date or we can go over to their house there was a reason there were some kids growing up that I wasn't allowed to go to their house one girl the mom was a drunkard and so my mom was like she my daughter's not going over there um not that the girl was bad or anything she was she was a great friend when I was little um and and I can see it, like, you think about peer pressure and influence, and uh, it's kind of saying that homeschoolers really use that as an excuse for, and saying that um, can create parents being isolated and things like that, and uh, mentioned, you know, and she did say, you know, back then there were not co-ops like there are today. So I was kind of thinking, so what would these oversights include mandating socialization? that because I think that's what would happen is you would have to submit to the state something like what co-op you are a part of and then it's going to get to the point where well we need to know what these co-ops are are doing you know what what's the evidence and then they're you know it just kind of can go on and on there's a uh, law in um or put in the put in the house in um I think it was New York maybe that um in order to be a qualified tutor you have to get permission from the superintendent of the district, which that's just kind of, that's insane. Um, 
and still, like I said, parents can still isolate despite their being co-ops. And I'm not going to deny that parents can unintentionally or intentionally isolate their kids from a co-op, especially if you live really far out and it just takes you sometimes 30 minutes to get in town. Or maybe there's just not a co-op because homeschooling is not popular in your area and the only good co-op is maybe an hour away and you got to drive an hour to get be part of a good co-op. And despite kids going out to, they said church is like not being enough. Um, and she kind of made it seem like it was bad to have kids being part of a multi-generation, you know, kids of mixed ages, which is what co-ops are. They're mixed ages versus being with kids of the same age as if that is somehow better, which I don't think it is. There's advantages and disadvantages of being with kids of mixed and same ages. It really just kind of depends on your kids and who they are around. Obviously, I don't want my six-year-old hanging around with 12 and 13 year olds all the time but for 30 minutes to an hour or once a week like that's not a big deal they're not going to be that easily influenced so check out the podcast I will put a link to it um listen to it uh let me know your your thoughts on that um I think the one thing missing from the podcast would have been someone that was went to public school and then decided to homeschool their kids because they had such a a negative experience themselves. Um, One of the moms that I do co-op with was in public school and she's like, you know, brilliant person. And she just wanted to, like, she knew she wanted to homeschool her kids. She hated school um, and she knew she wanted to homeschool her kids. So more often than not, people are going to have, uh, sometimes the grass is always greener on the other side that's true. Um, and then sometimes just people just have bad experiences in their education. And there's so much neglect that goes on in public schools that I saw like repeatedly over and over and over again. Um, so education, educational neglect can really happen. Physical neglect can happen in, in, in either instance. And like the one guy said that does the research says, you know, there's really just no solid, correlation and causation for abuse says it really there's just there's no someone's education does not really factor into whether they're more or less likely to abuse and like the lady said we lack data and that's true sometimes we just we just don't know but I can tell you that I'm going to go with the guy said like having government say that there's a law on something that is controlling like regulations oversight that is still control Like, we don't need the government involved. We need people that are not afraid to step in. And if you're going to love your neighbor as yourself, that you're going to step in and be bold and uh, and confront your neighbor when you have a a concern. And that doesn't mean just calling CPS or call the cops. That means you get in there and you address it um, with your neighbor when you have concerns that something may not be okay. We have to be bold um, and we have to be brave and not fear offense and persecution if if we do think um, that. But we need to do that before we would try to ever want to call um, CPS or the cops. Like that should definitely be a last resort that cannot be resolved within their own um, in community or even if it's a church anyway. So don't forget to subscribe. Mm-hmm.